I'm also going to have to remove the last tooth on the sector gear because here it doesn't release. So it's going to have to release from the tooth before the last one. So we're going to grind that, that down also. Here you can see the difference in the, the pickup tooth height on this 14 tooth one, which cleared, but like I said, the, the teeth engagement positions weren't correct. So the pickup tooth is not that high. It's just a little bit higher than the other teeth. On this 15 tooth one, the pickup tooth is way higher. Here you can see how much higher it is than the other teeth. So it's rubbing against the gear. I'm gonna grind that down some. So I had to grind this pickup tooth down until it was almost level with the rest of the teeth because otherwise it was rubbing against the flat surface on the sector gear. Now it's no longer rubbing. And I also ground the last tooth out the sector gear to short stroke the piston, but in order to allow the piston to release, because before it wasn't releasing, that last tooth was pushing it against the back and it wasn't even able to release. I used a belt sander to carefully grind this tooth off. You could also use like a Dremel tool. Okay, I think we're ready to start reassembling this after all that work. So make sure you put a lot of lube on here and in here. Put some lube on this gear rack teeth. I'm going to put this middle spur gear in first. And one thing I need to do is I need to measure what is the spacing here because I need to see if I need to add any, sh add some shims or how many shims I need to add. The 12.76, the spacing of the plastic gear, including the shims, 13.5. Okay, so I need to get the spacing to 13.5. So I'm going to use these original shims here. Put those on the metal gear. This is including the original shims, 13.5. So it should be good with the original shims. Put a little bit of grease on both sides here. And put this gear down in here. Moving on to the sector gear. The original gear with the shims measured 13.67. I'm going to take these shims off, put them on here. So I need to shim this a little bit. 0.2, I'm going to put a 0.2 on there. Put another 0.2 on the other side. 13.58, which is pretty close. Right, close enough. So let's put a little bit of grease on here and let's put a little grease in these teeth. Now we have to attach the bevel gear. The bevel gear has the bearings. Let's put the bearing in the housing here. Bearing on both sides. This other bearing in the housing. And it's got some shims, so we're going to take a measurement of it with the shims on. Okay, so with the shims, we got like 14.15 millimeters. Let's grab this metal bevel gear. I'm going to put the shims on that. What's up? Okay, so the metal gear with the stock shims, we've got 13.26. So we're gonna have to put a lot of shims on here to get to 14.1. So we need to add 0.8 millimeters, which is 4.2 shims. All right, so I'm gonna add 0.2 shims on both sides. And we're now at 14.09. Have a little bit of grease on here. Without losing the shims, they all came off on the grease.
Got to put the trigger back on. The trigger is these two pieces that can come apart. We're going to get the spring in between these two pieces. I gotta work that trigger in there. Might be overdoing it on the grease a little bit, but better too much than too little, maybe. I'll put the nozzle back on, put some grease in the in there to get this tap it back in here. Spring goes on this way. Tap it over the nozzle. Get the spring on the post here. And get that tap it back in here. It would actually be a good idea to put a little bit of grease on either side of this tappet. Put the tappet over the nozzle. Put the spring on. Put over the post. Put it all back down in there. Make sure that the tappet sits behind the sector gear right now. Put that sector chip up here. It doesn't get in the way of putting it back together. It doesn't apply too much pressure. Now I believe the last thing we're missing is this, the anti-reverse latch. So use this metal ratchet pawl, put it over the original post, like this, and put in the hole here. Bevel gear down. Then we're gonna take the spring from the ratchet pawl, anti-reverse latch, and push the spring down there. There we go. So now that anti-reverse latch should prevent anything from reversing. Okay, so I think we're good to put the cover back on. That was a lot of work. I'm gonna put plenty of grease in here on this cover. Top of this cover, this the the modified piston is gonna be sliding in here. So I want it to be nice and lubricated. You have to use a screwdriver to get all these gears to line up. Line up the trigger. There we go. If the piston is off the track, go look in here. Make sure it's on the track. Like it's not on the track there. So get it on the track. There we go. Piston is on the track. So the top comes together. The bottom comes together. All the gear axles are in the bushings or bearings, and the trigger is in position. Now before we go and put, completely put this gearbox back together, one of the things we want to check is how well is this pinion gear engaging with the bevel gear here. We might need to adjust the shimming. So if we attach the motor cage all the way in, and then we see like how far does this motor go in, the motor is going in pretty much as far as it can. It's up against the plastic up here, so there's really no room left for adjustment. That means that we need to shim this bevel gear towards pinion gear a little bit. So I'm going to take the gearbox back apart, unfortunately, adjust the shimming a little bit here. So last time we put shims evenly on both sides. This time I'm going to add the shims back to the other side to push it against the pinion gear. Okay, so the gearbox is back together. You can try to see how the motor engages again. Now we see that I end up meeting some resistance before the motor gets all the way in there. So that means that it is encountering the bevel gear before it's getting pushed all the way in. So that's better. So in doing that shimming of the bevel gear, it looks like I also need to move this gear down a little bit so it's not touching so it looks like I need to change the shim on the spur gear a little bit too. Right now it's like a 0.4 uh, shim and I need to lower the spur gear a little bit, but I still want some clearance from the plastic. So I'm going to find a 0.2 shim. So I'm going to replace that 0.4 with 1.2 shim on the bottom to, for clearance from the housing, then 1.2 on the top. So it allows a little bit more clearance from the bevel gear. 
so there's still some clearance from the plastic housing now. And let's see if the clearance from the bevel gear has improved. Because before it was pushing down on it. Let's see how freely this spins. It seems to be pretty good. I don't hear any rubbing or friction. Okay, so that motor spur gear engagement feels better now. So I'm ready to put everything back together. When you go to hook these wires back up, you can see one terminal is red, the other one is not marked, so it's black. Got the red one here. Okay, so this motor still has a lot of motion in here that can be adjusted, compensated for. So right now I'm just going to move it up a little bit, use a hex wrench in the back here. I'm using a Torx wrench in this case, but it's a good substitute sometimes if that's what you have at hand. So I'm going to move this motor up a little bit. And ultimately, we're going to do a sound test when it's back in the blaster. And you can kind of hear when it sounds the best, like when it's not forcing or whining that's the point where you want to leave the motor. So right now I'm just going to put it until there's not too much play. I just don't want it to strip the gears, you know, right away. And for testing, I'm just going to put the stock spring back in. I'm not going to put a higher spring yet until we know that it works well. Now if we make sure that these uh, mag contacts are protected and they're not going to touch each other or some other metal on here, we can do a quick test to see how it works. Gonna turn it on, of course. Well, it's working. Definitely a different sound from before. Put on full auto. So you can hear the motor sound changes as you adjust the screw. I can hear a sound like it, it slows down when I pull the motor away and speeds up when I push it in. So I suspect it's better when it's pushed in further. Okay, I'm gonna take this M90 spring now and put it inside there and see what it does with the M90 spring. I want it to be in a release position. So the stock spring has a wire diameter of 1.15. The M90 spring has a wire diameter of 1.3. And it also has a different coil pattern and it's also much longer. So it's gonna have much more compression than the stock spring, a lot more. Oh boy, that M90 spring is strong in comparison. It's huge, huge difference. What I don't like is that the M, that this spring retainer can't keep it centered, it looks like. It can't, it's not keeping it centered up here. See how it's going off center right there? It's no good that it's going off center like that. It's working though. It's shooting with it. Oops, there it stopped. I don't know what's... One thing I noticed when I was doing some testing is that I have two different batteries here. I have this battery from the SRB1200 and the battery from the SRB400. I don't know if the new SRB400 batteries are different, but the SRB1200 battery has something extra in here. And what I notice is with a stronger spring, the motor would cut out whenever I would pull the trigger. Uh, I think especially if the battery was low. Now I charge the battery and it's not doing it right now. But I think that this is a current limiter or a resettable fuse or something that's limiting the current that the motor can draw such that it cuts out. Or maybe it's cutting out because there's a low voltage of the battery and it's cutting it out. And then as soon as, I, as soon as you release it, the voltage jumps back up again and it, it cuts back on again. This is probably a safety feature that Spiderball has added to prevent people from uh, damaging their batteries by drawing too much current. 
So I still have the M90 spring in here and I noticed that in order to keep the spring straight and keep it from like moving around like this, you need to put this orange piece on the back here. And not only that, but it also needs to be in the body. So let's put all this stuff back in here, put the contacts back in. So now when we put it back into the body with the orange piece in the back, the orange piece keeps that spring guide straight and keeps the spring from moving around. So it might actually work with this M90 spring, in fact, when it's all in the body together. So I'm gonna put this back together and test it with the M90 spring and the new metal gears. I'm going to test it with the original Spiderball SRB 400 battery. Wow, that is loud. Much louder than it was before. This test uses the stock gel balls that come with the Spiderball SRB 400. I'm going to do single fire mode first. Uh, it looks like it's basically shooting two at once every time in single fire. Now I'm going to do full auto with the stock gel balls. In general, the accuracy with the stock gels is not that great. I don't know if you can see this. But... The spread is kind of all over the place. The distance is definitely greater than with the stock setup at 260, 70 FPS, it's going a lot further. This blaster could really benefit from having a hop up at the end to improve the accuracy and also the distance. So this test is with the hardened gel balls. These are war interest 3.0 red gel balls. And I'm gonna do a quick FPS test in single fire mode. So for sure these hardened gel balls are shooting harder than the stock gel balls. It looks like in the 276 to 300 range for a lot of these shots, some are a little bit lower, 231, 254, but a lot of them are pretty high. Okay, so now we're gonna do the FPS test in full auto with the hardened gel balls, the Warrantress 3.0. So in full auto with the hardened gel balls, it looks like we're averaging about 280 FPS. Some are a little bit higher, some a little bit lower, but it's got pretty good speed. Usually the hardened gel balls have better accuracy and higher FPS, but it seems like with the higher FPS from the M90 spring, the accuracy is not as good as the stock gel balls. They kind of fly off all over the place. Unfortunately, the accuracy is pretty bad. Honestly, I'll probably drop it back down to the original stock spring that it came with because at least the accuracy is better. With this M90 spring, the accuracy is all over the place even though it's shooting a lot faster and further. Soon I'm gonna try some hop-ups on the end to see how that improves accuracy with the M90 spring and I'll let you know how that works. I'm hoping that with the hop-up, that the accuracy is improved, I can continue to use this M90 spring for better distance.